Hey, this is the uh, six degree freedom motion platform up and running interface to FSX. It's uh, doing a route right now uh, to Gibraltar. Uh, I have Active Sky Next set up, which is a weather program. It's operating at about 70% turbulence. Uh, there are thunderstorms in the area, so hence the motion platform. I'm uh, just giving you some uh, general idea of what the platform is is doing as it's flying straight and level. Okay, so um, just to describe a few of the systems, this is how I treated the uh, position sensor to the AMC 1280 USB controller card. There is a uh, opposing shaft to the uh, actuator lever and this shaft is what supports the uh, the sensor mounting hub. Also notice that there are two uh, micro switches here. These are limit switches for the up down lever position so that if due to whatever reason uh, the actuator goes beyond vertical then this will prohibit any further motion in that direction until it gets a uh, movement in the opposite direction which is allowed and the other sensor does the same thing in, uh, in the other axes. This uh, blue piece here is a, a, um, a rubber interface between the hard uh, mount surface of the gearbox to the sensor mounting plate. And all this does is allow some flexing to occur such that uh, due to the the uh, lack of concentricity for these multiple parts uh, it will not create any wear, excessive wear on the sensor uh, hopefully increasing the life of the sensor. These sensors are available in a ball bearing type as well but the, uh, the standard bushing type I think will work and uh, hold up well uh, in this configuration. So these are the Grove gearboxes uh, the gear ratio on this is 180 to 1. Uh, these are 1.5 horsepower uh, Black Max 3-phase 240 volt motors. And uh, this gearbox is a double reduction. So there's a helical worm on this primary side and then a standard worm on the, uh, the output shaft side. The reason for that is you need the, for this application anyway, you need the reduction to this uh, six inch lever on into the actuator such that uh, with the 2,000 pounds sitting on top of the platform, it does not cause the gearbox to run away and essentially uh, drop down on its own. That's a problem with a standard worm drive depending on the weight. Again this platform has got a, uh, a wooden upper structure. This is for testing purposes only. I don't know, I'm lined up here on this actuator and you can see um, this is actuator number five and in looking down to the side of the upper platform you can see the actuator is actually slanted out outward by about two and a half degrees and the same thing when we line up with the lever the actuator is also slanted inward. Uh, this gives it a little bit more uh, opportunity to travel. Again the platform will tilt a maximum of 12 degrees in uh, all axes. Uh, notice on the rod ends, and these are one inch rod ends with the uh, over travel insert. So the shaft diameter uh, on this is uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, therefore, the bolt going through, a grade eight bolt, will be three quarters of an inch and it will attach to the upper platform, uh, which will end up being a uh, steel weldment, uh, very robust and adequate to support the. Uh, 2,000 pounds of load on top of it. Okay, central to all this uh, in this test fixture is the AMC uh, 1280 controller.
no surprises here. Uh, Thanos has done a great job in in preparing this controller. This box is an electrical box, uh, 12 inches square by 4 inches, I think. And the uh, whole purpose is just to uh, keep radiated emissions out of the box once the lid is on. Now this wiring in the final version will be cleaned up and jacketed, but right now we have a segment of wire going from the sensor, position sensor, which is a um, an analog out sensor uh, via the wires back to the controller and then also the micro switch limit switches uh, go back to the uh, the controller junction and then over to the the VFD uh, box so the the VFD box is essentially variable frequency drive um, mounting uh, for this uh, array of uh, actuator controllers. Uh, vertically there, there's a braking resistor, which is uh, these items here. It's a 100 ohm braking resistor. The uh, VFDs are the Hitachi WJ200s. These are the 2.2 kilowatt version. It allows for a little bit of extra capacity. Uh, we're not using all of this capacity, but uh, that's what was recommended. And there's six of these, of course. Uh, primary cooling is uh, via the VFD itself going upward, and then I've got these cooling fans which will help exhaust the, uh, the heat uh, that rises vertically. In addition, on the side I have uh, some vent areas and also an input fan to uh, help keep the air moving within this uh, this enclosure box. These uh, contactors below are simply a way to um, uh, power on and off the power to the VFDs. And that's done via a, a little uh, plug strip down at the bottom here. So when that's turned on, this uh, system uh, becomes active. The uh, outputs to the motors are via this array of plugs here. So six gearbox motors and six plugs. They go into the system on the inside of the enclosure up to each uh, VFD respectively. Labeled one through six. Then there's an emergency cutoff switch on the side. And uh, there's also one that will be within the cockpit um, as well as a kill switch. So these two items here will be mounted inside the cockpit so the user, or that is the pilot, can uh, uh, turn power on and kill uh, data coming into the AMC controller at any time. Thank 
Thank you. 